Welcome to Rubbish, the podcast about great books and smart people. I'm your host, Amaya Dharmasiri. Uh, today, my guest is a very special person. She and I have been friends for a very long period. We literally sat next to each other for years. And uh, she is none other than Sumaya Sayad. Well, Zumaya is uh, a third year undergraduate at the University of Colombo School of Computing and uh, she is a book enthusiast just like me. So ever uh, since we have been in uh, primary classes, we have been very uh, big fans of books, right Zumaya? Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we talk about books, we read books, we borrow each other's books and we have a very big uh, book history and <laughs> today we are going to talk about one of Zumaya's uh, favorite books am i right yes and uh, that is the road from the elephant pass written by nihal de silva ethnic conflicts and civil wars are not at all new topics for us wouldn't it be beautiful if we could just put aside all of our differences in races religions and ethnicities and look at each other as fellow human beings. And I read The Road from Elephant Pass on Zomaya's recommendation and I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's actually the first time I read an English novel written by a Sri Lankan author. So I guess there's a whole other uh, you know domain of books I haven't yet uh, explored. So what do you think about this uh, book Samaya overall? Uh, well like you said like this is one of my very first uh, Sri Lankan authors written books as well. So mm-hmm. uh, I was also very hesitant at the very first moment to read it but then uh, I had very good feedback from my own family like my sisters my uh, even my mother and father sat down in the book. And hmm. uh, I, uh, so what I did was, uh, after right after my old wells, I think I had time, so I thought, why not give it a try, and I read it, and I actually really loved it. Yeah, let's go ahead and give a small introduction about what this book is about, I mean, what kind of a plot it is, and then let's go ahead and talk about uh, the small aspects of it. Uh, yeah, so uh, The Road from the Elephant Pass is, uh, for most of you all who know, Ali Mankada, uh, as the name itself might imply, is uh, a story that was... Uh, built up upon the war, the 30-year war that happened in Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, it was a story of uh, where there was an LTT card, uh, lady card named Kamala. So mm-hmm. she actually volunteered to give up very valuable information to the Sri Lankan army. Uh, but uh, she had to be transported all the way to the army headquarters in Colombo. And uh, to do that, there was a, a journey, the journey from uh, Ali Mankada to Colombo. Uh, yeah. Along with uh, Captain Vasanta Rathmai, who was actually in charge of her until she was handed over at the army headquarters. So mm-hmm. that journey was uh, what the story revolved around. Uh, I'm a bit confused as to what to say and what not to say because I really don't want to spoil the plot to anyone who's trying to read it. Uh, yeah, so let's let's just stop right there and uh, yeah. let's just say that the book is about this journey uh, all yeah. the way from uh, Ali Mankada to Colombo and uh, this journey takes place, let's give one more hint, the journey takes place to <laughs> the, the, the National Park of Vilpattu. Uh, uh-huh. Somehow they make it to uh, Colombo. So yeah, that's basically the plot but uh, we guarantee you but there are going to be a l- real nice plot twists by the yeah. end of it so yeah, yeah. We, so we won't spoil it the readers will <laughs> enjoy it so I, I didn't actually see that plot twist it was a very good one I know I was actually I, I, I didn't want like a, you know sappy ending and I was uh, very happy like you know it wasn't it wasn't like a dream then you know it wasn't like they gave us what we wanted Mm-hmm. It was very real, I think. I think you can relate it, like, after all the books we've yes. read together and, you know, the good and the bad and everything. Yes. Uh, it wasn't, it was it wasn't this, uh, lit, uh, this uh, you know, the stereotypical fairy tale where yeah. two people from different True. ends come together yeah. and you know, fall in love. And so. this, is, this is very real. Like, it was very, it was very homely. Like, it felt like, mm-hmm. you know... I can totally relate to it, not in a deeper context, but then like uh, from how the conversations happened and 
how you know the author had gone all the way to write you and quote some things in singhala so yeah. i think when you were mm-hmm. found interesting um, yeah i really loved it like uh, it was like it was very homely like that's how i can put it so uh, mm-hmm. yeah for me uh, the homely part came uh, from the fact that i can actually relate to the places in the book uh the the cities and the yeah, roads they take uh so that was yeah i i agree it was kind of homely so so that's actually that is my first you know uh, impression about the book you know from the very first conversation i i it had the same other part as well mm-hmm. so like they are after uh, i think uh, it was uh, the ability to you know how he put forward a story like a story we knew of very lightly but uh, to you know articulate it in such a way that he mm-hmm. gave all the depth and the, all the meaning to the story now this book talks about two ethnic groups uh, there is a kind of a ethnic uh, tension between these two groups it ha- have been so far during the war and uh, when i got the opinions from actually both the sides of this uh, these groups well both the sides actually admitted that the story is very unbiased so i think yeah. that is one of the reasons the book stands out of the rest yeah and uh, to be honest like it gave us a peek into the we knew of the war you know but we didn't live through it like a lot of others did like to be honest so mm-hmm. it was like you know very uh, detailed about uh, several things how things were played like, with the army or through the journey i i loved it i actually loved it. One of the major things that I liked about this book is that now the two major characters of the book, uh, Kamala and uh, Vasanta, they embark upon this journey from Alibankara to Colombo. In a way, it's a physical journey in which they literally travel through forests and, uh, you know, uh, army, you know, checkpoints, LTD checkpoints and everything. But in a way, it is also a, an emotional sort of a journey. uh in which these two characters uh kind of you know evolve uh from the beginning of the book to the end of the book it is i think that emotional uh, journey is what uh, this book what, what makes this book special yeah true because uh, like uh, throughout the journey they actually had to survive with nothing right so they mm-hmm. uh, basically had to uh, cater for themselves from scratch with nothing in their hands and uh, that turned into a lot of it was like life happening right in front of you so uh, mm-hmm. it was actually amazing like you say it was not it was not just a walk through the park it was very emotional how they how they uh, looked had to end up how they ended up looking after themselves like you know the mm-hmm. entire reason for their be- them being there was like a whole conflict that resulted in so much of trouble but at the end they had to look after themselves from uh, other external yes. parties like this was a it was a roller coaster ride like i don't know from where they started to how they ended don't you think so yes because oh uh, no for someone who didn't read the book uh, the, the moment when uh, kamala and uh, vasanta meets they literally have like boiling rage and like a i know <laughs> uh, like a, a huge hatred uh, towards yeah. each other because now kamala is uh, literally uh, an ltd activist Yeah. and uh, Vasanta is a captain of Sri Lankan army so like it's a given that there is a yeah. lot of tension between mm-hmm. these two, these two characters but uh, in a way uh, they evolve at yeah. the end of the story they are literally like two humans uh, yeah. putting aside all the ethnic uh, you know uh, definitions uh, you know every barriers they're just two humans who fall in love with each other so it's a real beautiful story yeah. i would recommend the book to anybody <laughs> especially for those who haven't yet ventured into the Sri Lankan English literature don't you think like it would have been a good place to start definitely yes definitely uh, now uh, after i read the road from the elephant pass i actually started reading the the ginirella conspiracy also which is yeah. written by nihal de silva and there is another book written by the same author called the fast spent days day yeah i'm looking forward to read that also uh, giving a little bit of a background about the author uh the book is written by nihal de silva who won uh, the the gracian prize at uh, in 2003 for this particular book he is a very uh, you know a very celebrated author in uh, this uh, sri lankan uh, english literature community i think and leave us a sad part about what happened to him but what's actually interesting was that uh, he was very uh, invested into writing his content right 
like mm-hmm. uh, from the name sort of pinpointing the different kinds of birds and the trees you see in his books to uh, giving a real scenario of the location i think uh, that was that was that is one of the most uh, interesting things about how he writes his books but then uh, like even how he passed away i think uh, that was very sad you know uh, yes so he has been yeah he has been um Uh, collecting uh, some maybe context information about another for another novel maybe so he was doing his research in um, uh, the vilpattu national park itself where he was uh, he and i think some other people were victims of a landmine before going on to the next part of our discussion i want to make sure uh, i want to clarify about the objective of this particular discussion so this is a very sensitive topic to most of the people uh, a lot of trauma is involved a, tro- a lot of prejudices involved in this uh, particular topic and a lot of stigma so this isn't about uh, war or about ethnic conflict from a point of view of uh, let's say a sinhala person or a muslim person or a tamil person what we want to do is we just want to dig into the anatomy of uh, this ethnic conflict we want to see uh, as a third person observing this particular uh, phenomena we want to see uh, as how it origins how it evolves to eventually you know um, get uh, informed about how we as people can make a contribution towards making peace uh, not taking sides or not justifying anything wrong that happened in the past Yeah that's a uh, very true I think this would be a very uh, useful conversation especially in these days and uh, I think something we need to embark upon at uh, mm-hmm. some particular point of our life. All right. So um this ethnic conflicts and uh, civil wars have been one of the major threats to international security throughout I think uh I think there is you can't pinpoint where this ethnic conflict started it could have started you know a uh, way back in history where two tribes may be clashed so uh, with the evolution of the world it has evolved to a point where um this uh, ethnic conflicts have become a major threat uh, to the well-being of communities to the well-being of uh, the international peace and everything I uh, I am someone who strongly disbelieves in ethnic groups because uh, from uh, small age I think you would agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, people <laughs> people would brand me as a Muslim, but I really had a Muslim friend. Like all my friends were like, including Amma Amma. Yes. Friends. So I I am not a strong believer of this uh, you know the ethnic group concept, but uh, yes mm-hmm. I uh, I do get like where it starts from you know like. Uh, from uh, say location like geography location based or from uh, what you believe in so uh, it uh, it people i think define it in different ways mm-hmm. so at the end of the day i believe it's all just a matter of how you perceive it so the people who are actually uh, invested in doing research on this particular matter uh, the ethnic conflicts have uh, generalized it into three theories as to how an ethnic conflict is uh, originated what actually caused what, what actually causes a conflict between uh, one or more uh, uh, ethnic groups like you said even uh, i came across three very uh, three most highlighted theories where they were very popular among whatever research material i read and uh, out of them uh, the first one was the primordial concept of how ethnic conflicts happen where they uh, spoke about how uh, people uh, think of their groups as a family so thereby they try to you know protect and work towards work for that family to get to benefit that particular family it uh, the mm-hmm. family might be defined by uh, location or uh, or other beliefs or actions and biological features things like that so uh, mm-hmm. that was one uh, theory that was highlighted i'd say don't you think uh, this primordial uh, argument also uh, claims that it's it's hard coded into into their genes and some kind of a biological aspects so, yeah uh, yeah and uh, then uh, the second one was the one though that i found really interesting because uh, it spoke about how one person can be the driving force of an ethnic conflict that can result in so much of destruction 
So mm-hmm. uh, that was the instrumentalist concept of uh, ethnic conflicts. Uh, so where one person can uh, brainwash, like you say, uh, change the minds of his entire followers or society around him, and mm-hmm. then uh, drive uh, them to receive some drive them to fight for their community. Let's say so. At the end, it just starts by one single person, and. Uh, and then it evolves uh, that was uh, that i find interesting i i i believe that we could relate it to several aspects of uh, the world right now uh, yes so that and uh, the third theory was uh, the constructivist theory that was theory that said that maybe you know people fight because they imagine themselves as this as imagine a community around them as you know socially constructed unit and then based on that that you know they would uh, fight for that yeah. particular community for the yeah putting putting it in sim- simple words i think it's uh, the contract constructivist account is about uh, uh, the society itself defining uh, yeah uh, groups of people as in i i think uh, the, the the difference in you see you see castes and everything uh, i think that uh, falls under this constructivist uh, I uh, not that they have like proper ethnic sort of clashes, but it is kind of a scenario where society itself have defined uh, several groups. Yeah, true. Coming to it, yeah, it's like it's not it's not specifically groups, but then imagine very true. Like true, that is gives a good perspective of that theory. There is another example um, now. It, it's not a very uh, popular example, but this has ha- happened in Rwanda. where two uh, tribes have been defined uh, by uh, the ownership of i think it was cattle yeah ownership of cattle so if the person owns more than 10 cows so he is uh, he belongs to one uh, group and if the person has less than 10 cattle uh, he is uh, on the, of the other group so this i mean that's as absurd as it sounds so this has happened somewhere in 1930s and this cattle or this two groups that based on cattle ownership have uh, like developed and you know it it has kind kind of evolved and yeah. it resulted in a major genocide where like thousands of people were killed and it happened in 1994 wow that's that's absurd like you say like uh, but then it's also yes. a good example of you know how how small it can start and how devastating it could end right yes so very, very scary i would say very scary <laughs> so um now going through actually going through these three this all of these three courses but i found the most interesting is that it is not the difference in you know cultures it's not the difference in let's take let's say let's take two people let's say take, take you and me yeah basically so best example uh, <laughs> best example ever so you and i dress differently you yeah. and i uh, speak uh, our mother tongues are different you yeah. and i uh, we have different cultures we have different food but that is something that makes you and i different but that is not what causes ethnic clashes the di- these differences in cultures is not it's not what causes ethnic clashes it's it's maybe some third force that to capitalize on uh, these clashes or could be a leader somebody who would benefit from the mobilization of a certain ethnic group it's not the cultures that make people fight with each other and whenever whenever like that is that's a really good something i really want to highlight on because like whenever people say that like what i think of is university like how fun it is right we, we mm-hmm. hang out with everyone like you don't even uh, you don't even think of these things right like you know you yes. never sit next to a friend and think oh wait you of this culture and i of this culture <laughs> now what do you do i i literally dress different to everyone and still uh, i i don't know this this is something that i believe can be stopped but it's not happening sadly Mm-hmm. that one one point now even though even though culture is a beautiful thing even though i sincerely believe uh, i sincerely want to you know hang out with people of different cultures and actually you know be very good friends with them i know that you i know for a fact that sumaya you have gone through pretty rough experiences uh, being in a you know uh, majorly singhalese uh, 
in in a school where majority of the uh, students were sinhalese and you were one of the i think very few uh, muslim students in the school you have gone through i think uh, situations where uh, you were maybe discriminated or you know um, rather you know unpleasant kind of situations yeah well uh, true like uh, i would say a uh, school since i was there since like i was 5 uh, to 6 years old it didn't uh, mm-hmm. strike me much you know it was all it was all us like it was you me no difference like uh, we did yeah. everything together but then yes. uh, i think uh, when i went to university i really noticed the difference because uh, the very first few days like 2 3 days people mm-hmm. uh, like it was it was not their fault it was just that you know they assumed that i could not speak sinhala and mm-hmm. uh, sadly we do have the language barrier in sri lanka right so mm-hmm. uh, like uh, people really communicated with me and uh, being the outgoing person that i am yes. i uh, i found it pretty offensive the first few days i was like uh, i was like okay talk to me i can speak singhala mm-hmm. uh, i can speak english i can also speak tamil so you know don't don't like ignore me uh, mm-hmm. uh, but then uh, i think that's why it's, that's that's one point you know where my experience started with uh, like you know what they ter- define as uh, ethnicity and uh, stuff mm-hmm. so uh, but sadly i think uh, the lack of uh, interactions we have you know like uh, mm-hmm. with the uh, other parties or within the island itself is like giving reason to this because like i as soon as they saw me in my dress i think they termed me as someone uh, like you said prejudiced so mm-hmm. uh, you know i was termed as uh, someone okay i won't be able to speak singhal i would not be talking to people like uh, things like that mm-hmm. so uh, i uh, i think that's what we need to get rid of like you said like that was a real mm-hmm. eye opener to me like going out and that happened that has never happened to me <laughs> so so this this prejudice i think it's very uh, like it's it's clearly portrayed between these two characters in the book where uh, kamala and vasanta meet for the first time yeah, right true. yeah from uh, where they started how the anger and you know the i think hatred itself right like the way the conversations happened yes i would boil like hatred <laughs> yeah i think i would even term it as hatred so mm-hmm. uh, it was it was in built right you it was yes it it wasn't like we were surprised that it was present it was it was just you know no it was like normal for us to yeah uh, i mean keeping aside the fact that kamala is a is an ltt activist and vasanta is an army officer a uh, vasanta now this book is uh, written from the perspective of vasanta and uh, the uh, the guy hates this girl uh, for the fact that she is a tamil and uh, that she is uh, he thinks that uh, tamil people are like this and uh, it's the same with kamala as well now kamala hates uh, vasanta for being a singhalese so singhalese yeah. are like that she thinks like that yeah. so i think that's basically happening uh, everywhere yeah true it was like it was very very evident in the novel but uh, that's what made it so good also right like you know how mm-hmm. how the author gave perspective into that what we think matters does not matter like you know like their beginning their hatred was based on like theory uh, but built up mm-hmm. things and it had no reason and then how we how they at the end how they evolved into like a great relationship yes so yes and uh, the fact that uh, this hatred seems natural i think it's very frightening i mean it's something uh, uh, something like a hatred at that level should be uh, it should be something surprising but uh, unfortunately i think be- because of some sort of an environmental factor you and i ourselves even though we are like really hard to not think that way i think in a way it's a uh, kind of written in our subconscious yeah like it's it's uh, it's all like i don't know it's like we've been it's built into us so yes. that's that's a horrible like that's an absolutely horrible situation to be in i think the very fact that this uh, baseless sort of uh, claims that people from other ethnicities are like this they are not like us this this particular thought being hard coded into ourselves leads to another major problem that i saw in this book as well as uh, in the society itself it is this mentality of 
you know us versus them true like uh, it's very strong don't you think like uh, between people and how uh, they communicate and uh, how it is even portrayed on media don't you think the mm-hmm. us versus them game is very strong and uh, it is something i think that it's by doing something to that itself would make like a, make like a huge impact on how our society is currently functioning Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, that was actually portrayed really well like when you think about the book like how it happened and how it went from one point to another like uh, it it is evident that that us versus them mentality destruction is possible like it's just that we are keep on feeding it and people are being uh, brainwashed and blindsided by this don't you think the epitome of this uh, bad side of us versus them comes into play where people feel a moral obligation to defend yeah uh, their people despite of all the bad things that uh, they do it uh, it starts with stereotyping right it's like it's like okay everyone's the same and then you try to say no we are mm-hmm. not and then you end up defending like uh, even yeah. whether it's good or bad it's like uh, it's it's like if i don't defend this i'll be a part of this but i don't want to be a part of this so i have to defend this kamala herself is um, a an ltt activist but at deep down Uh, she's a person who you know likes birds who likes the nature deep down she has a soft side so even though she is in a way uh, a normal girl who likes birds and trees and stars and everything she feels this obligation to defend whatever uh, the ltte yeah. commits yeah true it was like she was forced into it right like she had uh, no option but to go along with what's uh, happening right now so mm-hmm. she had to had to uh, be a part of it but yes. uh, like you said it's very true like you know she was at the end just another woman living her life and then sad she got caught up in these things uh it's the same with vasanth as well now he being in the army uh adds kind of an obligation to him uh that he should defend whatever the army does even though it is uh, not acceptable to him as a person so uh there are uh, for an example there is uh, there's a mention about the way the army used to interrogate uh, their uh, yeah. terrorists so uh, vasanth himself is not a fan of this procedure but uh, he being in the army adds a uh, kind of an obligation to defend uh, it yeah it it was actually very uh, ironic like you said you know them uh, going for a separate purpose but then actually ending up having to rely on each other to survive at the very uh, same moment yes. don't you think like uh, so uh, mm-hmm. it shows it shows how uh, people are just uh, pushed into the situation without with a blind eye and they still have to defend themselves yes so uh, th- there is this uh, thought where if you don't stand up for what uh, your people do you might not have uh, a side at all as in you might not have anything to rely upon at the end of the day yeah yeah i think this is this is where we need to start working on don't you think like uh, mm-hmm. this is like a good point like especially for us like we are we are forced we are forced and we are, we are spending time with uh, different communities and uh, what not living together this so, and uh, so us i think we would be a good starting point to change this from somewhere yes um, and it's a uh, pretty impressive like some people are actually doing it right now exactly uh, and uh, but then have you i don't know whether you have realized but even the small things that people do they actually do make a difference right like although how well much we think uh, okay that's uh, as if he he can do that and change the world but even a little bit of the world like when a little bit of awareness is being raised Mm-hmm. uh sadly we need help from uh, the bigger parts of yes. uh, you know power and uh, what not it's it's pretty evident in the book itself because by the end of the book kamala and vasanth finally managed to put their differences aside and look at each other as another human being but uh, that doesn't make a difference uh, 
at the end at of the, the day i mean day, two people yeah. yes two people have put their differences aside and have eventually uh, fallen in love and you know it's a very beautiful connection but it doesn't make a difference to all this woe and politics and everything going around yeah. uh, them like uh, like it's a very common thing at the end you are the you are just another pawn in the game the big game so yes. sadly the two of them uh, ended up uh, being pawns mm-hmm. of someone else's game yes so, uh, so it's yeah. basically uh, this uh, this capitalist uh, sort of objectives uh, that they try to uh, realize through the war mm-hmm. it could be other international factors it could be the the some sort of a political uh, influence it's uh, but i think even though it doesn't make much of a difference in that context uh, people putting aside the differences and being able to look at each other as a fellow human being i think that makes a difference yeah even uh, even from uh, going from something small to interacting uh, like uh, when we step out it's not as bad as you know the we see uh, all it's via you know on the internet or on the tv but when we step out we actually know that sri lankans are really nice human beings like we do so well <laughs> together i mean it's 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 my culture i love i love uh, how uh, my culture i mean how we interact with each other how we dress how we talk how we eat and everything but uh, when it comes to uh, interacting with another person the those yeah. should not be a barrier true like you uh, like you said am i like uh, the culture itself i think the different cultures is something we have to enjoy right like <laughs> like uh, the <laughs> food we enjoy from different cultures <laughs> so, like i enjoy what i love from your from I your know, place so <laughs> it's something we get to celebrate and enjoy right like uh, the functions the events the colors say from um, holi to taipong girl to uh, the choir room to cookies and then you know from the what love from the biryani yeah. so, uh, <laughs> something we can so enjoy like if we do it right but uh, sadly it's turned into something else instead Uh, i think we should start from admitting that uh, there is a certain aspect of this prejudice and a certain aspect of this us versus them mentality if we can actually admit that ourselves are like ourselves are guilty of uh, these factors i think then we can start uh, working uh, on them and then like yeah. solving them for ourselves true that's that's the mentality we really need to get out of i think mm-hmm. uh to uh, you know we could do a lot better than uh, what we are doing right now like you say if we put yes. all us instead of us versus them thank you so much for being here uh what do you think how is it thank you very much for having me it has been an absolute privilege to be honest you know and uh, to walk a talk about an interesting mm-hmm. topic and uh, to maybe i uh, i hope that we gave something forward to someone who is listening yes. to this and uh, if we did i am so very happy that i got to be a part of this and uh, all thanks to you i believe thank you you are welcome you are most welcome and uh, the book we were discussing once again was uh, the road from elephant pass by nihal de silva uh, go ahead and read it i think it would be a real life opener for most of you once again thank you so much for being here and that was the third episode of ramage hope you enjoyed interesting people are most often book lovers so i invite them on my show to talk about their favorite books. You are listening to Ramage, the podcast about great books and smart people. Ramage is now available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and Stitcher.